Hi, good afternoon and welcome to Courageous Journeys with me, Theodora Michelides. We're happy that you took the time to tune in today. Courageous Journeys is a brand new uh, program which focuses on um, several areas. Our mission is to provide an opportunity for individuals, family members, uh, community leaders and businesses to share their personal stories with you in order to, through their own transparency and vulnerability, help others heal. Um, I, I truly believe that in doing that, it will give those that are thinking that they're all alone in whatever it is they're suffering from an opportunity to know that they're not alone. Um, we also uh, plan on helping to build community awareness and unity and provide opportunities for personal and professional growth encourage, inspire, and empower others through the programming that we bring to you. I have a favorite quote that I created uh, myself because I believe that love is one of the most important things and a critical part of this programming. And that is that love is the greatest of all things and all things good come from love. Um, today, we uh, on the programming on, in the near months, we're going to have family talks the arts. We have several local artists that are going to be coming in and speaking to us about the type of art forms that they use, including dance, painting, music. So I'm excited about that. Um, programming will include topics such as uh, mental, spiritual, and physical health and how to improve those. Uh, local, global, and environmental issues, including um, our local environment and abroad, and how to save money re and resources business and economic opportunities. Um, during each show, our guests will be able to come in and join us live, as well as Skype in and call in uh, when we open it up to those calling lines. Um, today, we're fortunate enough that we are going to have a guest with us from one of our local spiritual leaders. He comes to us from the Islamic Community Center of Fresno. He's, his background, uh, it, that is the Imam Ghazvini, and Imam means spiritual leader. Uh, his background, he has a, a bachelor's in political science from Iran, a certificate of Islamic theology, which is uh, equivalent to a master's, an MBA from the U University of Laverne, California, and speaks three languages, English, Farsi, and Arabic. He's the founder of and director of the Asidik Foundation, a Muslim community senator in Southern California from 1996 to 2004. He's the founder and president of Development and Relief Foundation, the DRF, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping women and children offering quality education and health services in Iraq. This was founded in 2004. He's a member and trustee of the Alibat University in Karbala mm -hmm. Iraq. in Iraq and um, participated in more than 35 national and international conferences um, about Islam in the Middle East. Please wel help me welcome um, Imam Ghazvini. Thank you. Thank you for coming in today. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. So, <laughs> I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to Thank be you. here. Thank I know you. it's an important time right now for, for the Islamic faith. Um, and possibly not the best time of year, but I appreciate you coming in just so we can all gain a little more understanding as to what exactly is the Islamic faith and, you know, the similarities to some other faiths that are um, prevalent here in the community. All right. Well, I would like to say hi to your uh, audience, uh, listeners and the viewers. I would like to thank you for your kind You're invitation welcome. to be one of your guests. And congratulations on starting this wonderful show. Uh, uh, well, and I also would like to start by uh, offering a greetings of peace. Salamu alaikum um, to everyone who is watching or listening. And what's the response? Salamu alaikum. Uh, salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Peace be on you too. Peace yes. be on you too. Thank you. Thank you. So there's a lot of, uh, I don't know very much about the Islamic faith at all. So in my readings, um, I was quite fascinated in learning that the Islamic faith dates back to um, the Hebrew faith. And I, I, wanna, I wanna have you touch on that and then also talk to us about um, what the six articles of faith, six articles of faith are yes. in Islam. And then when we go over them, kind of break it down for us. All right. 
Well, I'll give you a very brief uh, background about uh, the history and the beliefs and the practices of the faith. Um, uh, the faith started in uh, about 14 centuries ago, uh, uh, 610 AD, when uh, Prophet Muhammad started his ministry in a, in a city in the Arabian Peninsula called Mecca. Uh, uh, we believe that um, Islam is uh, a member of the Abrahamic faith. Mm -hmm. um, Abraham is the father of all the prophets and, and, uh, and faiths, uh, especially the three major faiths, Judaism, Christianity, mm -hmm. and Islam. The monotheistic. The monotheistic uh, faith, yes, faith. So uh, basically we are we're part of this family and then uh, it started at, uh, in Mecca 14, uh, 14 centuries ago. Uh, what do we believe in? Uh, we believe in worshiping God, the God of all nations, uh, all faiths, the creator of the universe, um, the source of all good things in, in, in the world. Uh, we believe he is beyond time and space. He created time and space. Uh, and we believe that uh, he's beyond gender. Um, mm. We say he because um, what else? Uh, it's it's a it's a lack of language. We mm -hmm. we believe that um, he he created us into two genders, uh, but um, he's beyond gender. He's not male or female. So we believe in him, and we we only worship him, believing in one God, and we believe this. The God we worship is the God of all faiths, especially the Abrahamic family of faith, Judaism. This is what the Quran says. You are worshiping the 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 God of uh, Moses, Jesus, and of course Muhammad. Um, and also, we believe in all the prophets, prophets mentioned in the Bible, and some who are who are not mentioned in the Bible. And we believe in the seal of the Abrahamic. Prophets Muhammad, who was born in Mecca in 570 A.D. And what does it mean, the seal of the uh, Abrahamic? Uh, we believe that um, he, he is the last prophet that received uh, revelation Divine. from God within the Abrahamic faiths. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, and the differences on the origin of man, for instance, I found fascinating. That although they they discuss the origin like Adam and Eve, but then it's different. It's not the rib of uh, Adam. It is that God breathed into them yes, we at believe, the same time. We believe that we have a, a common understanding about uh, uh, the creation and especially um, the first man and the creation of the first man or a human race with little bit of minor differences. Mm -hmm. We believe that God created um, the man, the first man, Adam, and his wife, uh, created equally from the from the same material, and we believe they are equal in, in a creation. Mm -hmm. uh, no human bears any sin when he or she is born. They are born in, uh, innocent, with no with no sense and of. And then guilt. come into puberty then they start having a reckoning of that right a record yes of at, at the age of puberty they they start they supposed to practice their faith and have responsibility so practicing faith means now you are ready to to understand. to understand and and carry on your responsibilities as you are maturing and becoming adult mm -hmm. there are responsibilities part part are social part of a part are religious responsibilities so what kind of when you when we say puberty at what age is there an official age that boys and girls start i i would say at around 15. okay so the, a little bit older that's that's good as far as having an understanding of what yes, responsibility is yes though in many homes they start to practicing at age of five six seven because uh, kids they do imitate their parents mm -hmm. and uh, many they start for example we are in the month of fasting Many many kids at age of 12, 11, 13, 14, they do start uh, the 
the fasting or other religious practices. So that's why when you see um, a family that's uh, Islamic, the younger uh, women are not covered, do not have their heads covered. Is yes, that the reason? It's not, it's not mandatory for younger girls. Until to, they to, reach that. Until, yes. yes. Oh, and then even then, do you in your congregation, uh, is that mandatory or just during prayer? In our, in our congregation, we leave it as a personal choice for uh, uh, for members to follow or not. It's, uh, so all are welcome. We do not impose any okay. any strict uh, attire code. Wonderful. I look forward to looking into that deeper. We're in Thank a minute you. here. We're going to break for commercial all right. and go deeper into the Islamic faith all so right. that we can all have a better understanding. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Hey, Central Valley, this is Chuck Leonard. Starting in September, I'll be on KAIL, my 7.1. Let's go out in the Tower District and see what people think. Chuck Leonard, I saw that guy in a tour bus with Eddie Money. Chuck Leonard, that guy's been building himself up for years. Chuck Leonard, hey, why you gotta hassle me, man? Central Valley Buzz with Chuck Leonard, starting September 16th on KAIL, my 7.1. Did you know you could buy a home in this foreclosure market for as little as $500 a month? If you want your kids to go to McLean High School, Scandinavian Middle School, or Erickson, take a look at this beautiful home, three bedroom, two bath. Uh, there's a beautiful uh, rock wall to put a, a wood burning stove. Uh, there's also a very open floor plan with the fire, another fireplace. The kitchen, you've got to see the kitchen, it has a beautiful snack bar for your kids to sit and do the homework while you're preparing the dinner under $500 a month. Call us and see if you're qualified. Call Mike Briggs at Mike Briggs Properties at 486-6758 or go to MikeBriggsProperties.com. You can purchase this nearly new home near Kings Canyon and Fowler Avenues for as little as $800 a month. At 1,700 square feet, it has four bedrooms and two baths and a three-car garage. It is located near Sunnyside Shopping Centers and has great access to Freeway 180. This home is located in the Clovis Unified School District. For more information on any of our properties, check out MikeBriggsProperties.com or call Mike Briggs Properties at 486-6758. Hi, I'm Greg Rude, a local real estate agent working with London Properties. You might be thinking about buying or selling a property right now, or maybe you just have a question about real estate. I'd love to help you with that. Give me a call at 352-7716, and I can answer any questions that you might have. Maybe you've got a property that's upside down. Maybe you're interested in buying a bank foreclosure and have a question about that. Or maybe you just like someone to show you some houses that you're interested in or have a question about a particular property. Once again, give me a call. My name's Greg, 352-7716, and I'd love to help you. Thanks. You're watching CentralValleyTalk.com. CentralValleyTalk.com. Hi, and welcome back to Courageous Journeys. We're here today with Imam Ghazvini, and we thank you for tuning in. We're learning about the Islamic faith. Welcome back. Thank you. So we were discussing um, a little bit about what the beliefs, the core beliefs are of the Islamic faith. So I'm going to let um, Imam continue with what. Yes, so we believe in and worship one God, and then we believe in the prophets. Then we have four major practices that we have to do. One is to um, pray five times a day. Prayer is part of every major faith or, or every faith. Um, we pray five, five times a day um, at different times, early morning, at noon, afternoon, sunset, and at evening. Then we have to pay um, the charity. This is the second practice, what is called zakat, all alms. Also, we have to fast for one month for one lunar month during the year. Uh, the month is called the month of Ramadan. Which is what you're doing right yes, now. Yes, we are, we are toward the end of Ramadan right now. 
on Thursday or a Friday, depends on the sighting of the new moon. Mm. Uh, the next month will uh, start and we will have a huge celebration in every community, including our community. And so you officially break fast and what does that involve? This is uh, actually, it's a, a day of uh, a celebration. Uh, starts with early morning prayer, then a, a breakfast. And then our community and families, friends would uh, exchange gifts and greetings and, and outreach to one another, uh, call their families, loved ones. Some of them even go to the cemeteries and, and show visit. Show respect. Yes, show respect. So it's a, it's a significant day. It's called Eid, E-I-D. E-I-D? Yes, Eid. When you break the Ramadan? When, yes, when it's the end of, uh, it's a, celebration of conclusion one month of fasting and believing that we have gained the satisfaction of god and empowered our spirit so mm -hmm. it's a it's a joyous moment for and unlike um my own fasting orthodox uh christian orthodox fasting you have a, a little bit different system so instead of doing a 24-hour thing where you're particularly cutting meats and dairy and whatnot you're fasting during the day and then not explain yes, that to me. Yes, we, we fast every single day for one month, mm -hmm. one lunar month, that which could be 29 days or 30 days mm -hmm. from uh, before sunrise, about one hour, 30 to uh, 40 minutes before sunrise, mm -hmm. which is called dawn. We stop eating, drinking, smoking and any sen sensual acts and then we continue with this until sunset okay yeah so which is about yes which is about um between 16 to 17 hours here in the central valley if you go north it, go it goes beyond that mm -hmm. if you go south it becomes shorter yes and it is more hard when you fast during summer because it's hot weather yeah and longer days um, so you become more thirsty than, than, uh, I can imagine I do a lot of work outdoors and I, I, th I would yes. have a hard time without water during yes. the day. It, it is, it, it is challenging during summer. Then we have the last practice in our faith, the major practice, which is a pilgrimage, um, every practice. Background. Yes. Every practicing Muslim, if they can afford the trip financially and physically, they have to do it once a year to go to Mecca. Wow. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, once in lifetime. I was gonna say, once a year I'm so, is pretty, I'm so pretty sorry. Expensive. Yes, once in lifetime. However, it occurs once a year, every year Especially. for, yes, for for people to go. But ma the mandatory part on, on practicing Muslims is once in lifetime. So on visiting the Mecca, um, at that time, what's the time of year? They must make um, immigration or, or visitations yes. much more lenient for people to go versus other times since they know that's a religious. It's a, it's a peak uh, time for pilgrimage. Um, they can go uh, in, in many months during the year. Uh, okay. But uh, the, the, the mandatory pilgrimage time is, uh, is just uh, a certain period during the year, which is about a hundred days after Ramadan. Okay. A hundred days so after Ramadan. So does that Ramadan. fall in the, sorry, I can't do the math right now. Is that in the winter or? It, well, uh, because we, fo we follow a lunar calendar, it always shifts. Okay. So uh, some seasons it's in winter, sometimes it's in fall, Some sometimes it comes to the summer and then it it, it, it rotates, rotates around the year. Well, yes. and in the Orthodox faith, too, our, our calendar shifts, and it, it depends on back with the Hebrew faith yes. uh, Passover. So that's always strange to a lot of people to understand that. So I, I get a little bit of that. Um, I wanted to go a little bit into some of the other six articles of faith yes. in Islam. Well, what, what I shared with you is the major, uh, major um, beliefs and understandings of all muslims mm -hmm. i would say okay 99 uh the six articles is not something that all muslims oh. believe oh interesting yes they, we share some of these six, six okay. articles believing in one god believing in angels believing in the prophets believing in, in that humans will be resurrected one day after this life 
uh, on a day called the judgment day where God will judge humans based on their deeds and acts in this world. And then uh, if they have done good, he'll reward them by admitting them in, in heaven. If they have done evil, he might punish them or he might forgive them. Mm -hmm. uh, however, the last article that is uh, 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 known as the, the next six, uh, sixth article of the six articles of faith, uh, pre predestination is something that not Muslims, not all Muslims agree on. Predestination? Yes, predestination. We believe, uh, like uh, uh, I myself, I believe that God has given us a, a freedom of choices. Mm -hmm. It, uh, it does not make sense that God uh, forces us to do something and then reward us or punish us. Right. It does right. not make sense at, at all. Uh, the, the concept of uh, responsibility comes with the freedom. So we do believe that in certain areas, we are free to, to choose. We cannot choose the place we were born or the color of our skin or some of our physical uh, uh, yeah, uh, some of so, but we have a lot of uh, area to choose from and a freedom to choose. You know, uh, I could have spent uh, this time instead of coming here. I could have got went shopping or something <laughs> like that. So yeah. it's a, but you chose a, to share your faith. Uh, it's, so. a, it's a it's a sign of appreciation to come here, and so it, we have uh, choices to make, and we believe that uh, God has granted us this freedom. It's God given gift, and we have to use it in a very responsible way. Mm -hmm. So these are basically what we believe in and what we practice. And so you um, personally, how did you, how were you originally inspired to actually take on the challenge of being a spiritual leader? Well, this is very interesting a question. Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. um, I was born and raised in a, in a family that, you know, I really do not exactly know how many generations we are that um, we serve the faith in a, in a position. I think for the last 10 generations, my father and grandfathers, they uh, they all, uh, you know, imams. In, in moms in, in this field. Uh, and amazingly, I, I have four children, um, three sons, one daughter. Two of my sons are uh, studying to become imams. One is already an imam. My younger son, he is um, in high school. <laughs> he says, uh, I want to be a dentist. So I said, good for you. But I don't know. We we were raised in uh, in this kind of family, and somehow I got the passion to serve the community this way. Yes. And how did you come from Iraq to the U.S.? I was born in Iraq, uh, 1958. Uh, uh, then uh, when Saddam came to power, uh, he persecuted mm -hmm. many Iraqis. Mm -hmm. you, you remember Saddam, uh, yeah. an evil man. I'm old enough. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, we had to leave Iraq. My family, especially my father, ha uh, had to leave Iraq to basically save his lives. And uh, so we escaped basically from Iraq. We lived in Iran for, uh, I lived in Iran for about 16 years. And then we finally migrated to United States to find a, uh, a shelter, a, a freedom to practice our faith and, uh, uh, you know, an opportunity to uh, do our best, you know, serve our families, mm -hmm. fulfill our our dreams, and serve the country. So, and when you originally came here, then you started um, an Islamic community in Southern California. Yes, when I I actually joined my father who was here oh. already. Okay. So um, uh, I joined the family, and then we started a, a small community center mm -hmm. in Southern California. Uh, which is uh, still running, uh, and it's now it has a, a full-time uh, Islamic school there. Uh, is your father still there? And my father went to Iraq after the fall of Saddam. Okay. He, he went, went back, back yes, to save, to, uh, actually to serve the Iraqis. So, uh, but the the community center is there, and then I've been here in Fresno for 
I'm, I, I guess I'm blessed to be in the Fresno for about 10 years now. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we have a couple more minutes before we uh, break for commercial. So um, when you came to the Central Valley, did someone invite you to come and to start a community? Yes, here? actually they were searching for an imam. Uh, they interviewed many, I guess, on, on and oh. I was on the list. Okay. So uh, I got to be invited to come and, uh, and, and meet the community. Uh, and uh, uh, for about, I would say, four to five months, I would commute uh, oh, every Southern week. California, yes. That's a big home. Until um, we both established some kind of uh, chemistry yeah. or, uh, and then I'm glad I, I uh, chose to come here and uh, uh, the community expresses a lot of support and appreciation. Yeah, there's a pretty large Islamic community here in Fresno, for sure. I have no idea probably the audience doesn't know too. How how big is your congregation here in Fresno? All right, there are about four Muslim community centers in, in Fresno, and there are many others in, in Madeira and uh, and Visalia. So there's four different, so they practice slightly different beliefs or it's? Well, uh, every center, they, uh, they have their own understanding. Mm. So um, you, you might see a little bit of Different, little bit, not not, a, and, and the foundation is basically the, basic the, foundation. the, the, the prayers <laughs> and the practices, the fasting. It's, it's about the same. It's uh, and, and the difference is how uh, you were coming um, people from uh, different backgrounds and mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. from the different countries too. Probably. Yes, yes, yes. Interesting. Yeah, I I'm curious to know when we come back. We're going to talk a little bit about possibly some of the um, those core beliefs with regards to the countries that they or originate from. And you mentioned earlier that you have a mixed congregation with a lot of people from different areas. Yes. So I'd like to talk about that too. Yes. So, um, I thank you for coming in again today. And thank um, you. My pleasure. So on Courageous Journeys, we're going to be having two programs a week. We will we'll be joining you on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. and on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. We'll come back in just a minute. This segment is brought to you by Corrine Hatfield of Platinum Mortgage. If you are thinking of purchasing a new home or refinancing an existing home, call Corrine Hatfield at 917 <laughs> This just in, Tower District houses are selling for as little as $300 per month. If you have a job and decent credit, you can own your own home. If you can come up with a down payment, you can own a home a lot cheaper than you can rent, and your payment will never go up. Also, you could deduct most of your house payment from your income taxes. If you'd like to lock in your monthly house payment at $300 to $500 per month for the next 30 years, call Mike Briggs Properties, 486-6758. Mike Briggs Properties, 486-6758. Hey, my name is Chris DeVold, and I am host of one of CentralValleyTalk.com's hottest new shows, Sex, Drugs, and Chris DeVold, where we sit around for an hour and read the Bible. No, no, we don't. You think with a name like Sex, Drugs, and Chris DeVold, that's what we're doing? No, we sit around, we talk about lewd topics, we drink beer, and I vow to bring you one local live musician every friggin' week. You can count on that. So grab your best friend, come to the studio, or watch from home, and get ready to blush every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on Sex, Drugs, and Chris DeVold. You can advertise your business, your product, or your event on Central Valley Talk, the Valley's only internet television station. Several of our programs are also picked up on DISH and cable networks. For the best advertising dollar, call Central Valley Talk at 579-1360. You're watching centralvalleytalk.com. Centralvalleytalk.com. Hi, and welcome back to Courageous Journeys. We're here today with Imam Ghazbini from the Islamic Community Center here in Fresno. 
Um, and we were just talking about how you originally came here. And then I was fascinated by something else that you're involved in, and that was the um, Development and Relief Foundation that's helping women and children and also building schools. I'd love to learn about that. Oh, thank you for asking about this. Uh, well, um, after the fall of uh, Saddam, and uh, you know, we were involved heavily in Iraq as, as uh, uh, the American nation and also American government. Mm -hmm. Uh, we sent troops, basically. Uh, so, uh, as someone who was born who was born in Iraq and uh, and now live in the United States with uh, a lot of connections, we we thought we can help Iraqis in other ways other than military um, uh, operations. Mm -hmm. Or uh, so we thought. Uh, it's good to establish this organization, Development and Relief Foundation, to help <clears throat> Iraqis build the schools, um, uh, support orphans. You know, there are about 5 million orphans in Iraq. Uh, yes, uh, kids who lost their uh, uh, one of their parents, or sometimes both, because of violence, because of terrorism, uh, because of war. Uh, because of uh, tribal violence uh, for many reasons. And <clears throat> unfortunately, when they uh, lose their uh, breadwinner, um, the whole family struggles there. Yeah. So we try to help uh, orphans and actually bring them from from uh, from streets as they work to schools. So we support their fa fostering foster family to uh, uh, provide what they for the kids so the kids can can go to school so um you have a program that um recruits foster families yes and then they bring a child from the orphanage into the foster family they we try to uh actually fi find a, a foster family to it's uh, it could be one of the relatives like uncle aunt grandfather grandmother uh, or the mother or the father if they are like orphans of, of one parent so we give financial aid to to the family to take care of that child and instead of the child working on the street to bring money to the to to support himself or or herself so he or she can get to be educated Yes. And then aren't you also um, involved in or have built a school of some sort? For we, girls we, as well? Yes, we've built uh, many schools. Uh, uh, right now we are building um, a, uh, two schools for uh, for girls because we believe that um, empowering girls is uh, in any community will make a big difference. There is a saying, um, if you teach a boy, you are teaching one person. If you are teaching uh, a girl, you are teaching a nation or a community. That's interesting. Yes. So. Because they teach their children. They and teach. Uh, yes, and girls are are very committed to uh, transfer their education to others and especially to their own children. I, I also believe that just from my own experience, that quite often same goes with the faith. That when. Um, when the mother has a certain faith, usually the children will follow yes. just because she's the most involved. Not yes. not always, but yes. generally. Yes, the relationship between mother and kids it's it's so uh, strong. I always say, in my, you know, with respect to all parents, dads and uh, mm -hmm. and, and and mothers. I am I am a father too and a grandfather, mm -hmm. but I say, a family can survive with a mother, but cannot survive with father alone. Can survive with mother alone, but cannot survive with father alone. That's it's, interesting. It's really, seriously. <laughs> Did your wife know that? <laughs> I say it in my sermons. Do you? you know, yes, I do say it in my sermon. Um, God, we believe that God uh, created us equally, but we function differently. Mm -hmm. And the passion that God gave mothers to protect their own families and children is not matched. You know, fathers are good in working hard, going, you know, um, uh, on the 
farms or uh, offices or wherever to to bring uh, bread to home but the passion of uh, raising the kids falls mainly we believe on on mothers and this is how this relation between mothers and kids are established and how mothers transfer their values mm -hmm. their education to their kids so you see many members they come to me in the community and say oh you know what when i was a, a child my mother used to say this or you so i'm used to that because of my mother you know yeah same goes with language too um as far as what the islamic community center uh, here in fresno is doing for the outer community i'm curious to know if they're involved in doing anything beyond the uh, muslim yes we do we are involved in variety of uh, programs uh for example we distribute food uh four month four times a month in the central valley in areas which is more I would say less fortunate areas. Are you doing that with another program? We do. We do this with the help of uh, uh, food bank. Mm -hmm. uh, we do sponsor uh, the food they distribute, and then uh, four times our volunteers go with food bank. Uh, most of the time, sometimes like Ramadan, it's it's really uh, hard to travel out of. Uh, your city or your home during summer they stay pretty but close yes at home. but um, most of the time our volunteers with food bank volunteers they go or or workers they go to different villages uh, in the central valley to distribute food um, we are we are also involved involved very strongly with the interfaith community oh that's right you're yes. part of that i am i am the co-chair of uh, the interfaith alliance of central california uh, the other co-chair is uh, reverend natalie chamberlain um, uh, who's did you a, say natalie? natalie is that a woman yes okay. she's she's a, a lady yes so i'm uh, you know we both are the co-chairs of of the interfaith alliance uh, and of course we uh, we are involved in in many schools and uh, and uh, other organizations non-profit organizations um, i am part of another non-profit organization who is uh, the the head office is here in fresno but they are operating a hospital in Afghanistan, oh, yeah. in Kabul, okay. treating about uh, 3,000 patients every month. And uh, so you personally or you and some of your... No, I am a member of that. I am okay. a board member of that organization with other uh, entrepreneurs and, and people with uh, good hearts uh, who would like also come from the same idea, people to people diplomacy and mm -hmm. Um, showing the world the good heart Americans how they 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 give uh, to other nations yes and how they serve to other nations well yes. and I know that here in our community you have a few families that have done pretty well for themselves in different industries and they're very involved in helping with um, hope of home of hope yes and, um, and those yes. are nice programs as yes. well so yes. um, I always find that encouraging definitely um, okay, so let's see. There's a couple more areas. Did the uh, audience have any questions they would like to ask the Imam while we have him here? You were asking during the uh, break about um, the different sects and, and how that. Oh, between the Sunni and the Shiite. Yep. Yes, they... I learned a little bit in my history class, but I wanted to know more about the difference. Thank you. She asked about uh, the difference between Sunnis and Shias. Um, Within the Muslim communities, we have uh, also uh, different denominations, uh, but not not as a lot as maybe in other faiths. Uh, the two major denominations in, in our faith, there is a, a major one that is called um, uh, Sunni Muslims, about 75% of the total population are. And are you Sunni or? I am myself, I am a Shia Muslim, a Shia. yes. Uh, Shias are, Shiats are uh, between 15 to 20% of the total it's population. Less. Yes, they are very less. However, in Iraq, uh, in, uh, in Iran and in, in other countries, um, they are the majority, uh, yes. So 
what is the difference? Uh, basically, they have a, a common belief on the articles that I mentioned, mm -hmm. pillars of faith, uh, you know, worshiping God, believing in the messages and the practices. The difference starts after the departure of the Prophet. <clears throat> Shia Muslims follow 12 Imams uh, uh, as their religious leaders and they are the family of the Prophet. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Sunnis follow the companions of, of, of the Prophet, especially the four companions who became head of the states. Who uh, worked directly who, with Who worked Muhammad. with, yes, who worked, then they became leaders after, after Muhammad the Prophet. And then the 12 that you mentioned, how did they how did they come to being? Were they were they in existence when Muhammad no, was alive? No, they uh, 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 three of them were alive at, during the time of Muhammad. So one becomes the spiritual leader. After his okay. death, the next ministry goes to to the next person. Uh, they choose. Do they, they choose? They, the the Imam who is alive would say who is after him as a spiritual leader and, and let, let the community know uh, which spiritual leader they should they, So, they, they so should is that how then your father passed on to you? No, and... we, we are talking only about 12 Imams. This is, the, this is part of our religious beliefs that um, uh, we believe in the Prophet and the 12 Imams. Uh, however, a spiritual leader in any community center or a mosque is called an imam, but this is different than those oh, 12. Than the yes, we believe that 12 imams are infallible. Okay, like yes. saints for us. Yes, like okay. saints. But other imams is just um, an, an ordinary uh, practicing Muslim who chose to serve the community and, uh, and uh, you know, get a study as a, a theology of Islam or in, in the seminary and then serves the faith. When I was doing uh, research um, on the internet, there's a lots of different viewpoints and conflicting uh, information yes. out there. Do you have a particular website that you would guide um, our viewers to, to find out more information on their own about your beliefs? Yes, uh, the, the website of the community center that I serve there, um, icfresno.org provides uh, uh, fairly, uh, you know, good amount of uh, information. Now, is it ICC? No, it's icfresno.org. Okay, I yes. thought there were two yes. C's, so I'm glad we clarified that. that. Our official name is ICCF, but our, our internet mail, uh, internet address is icfresno.org. Okay, wonderful. Yes, it does provide um, the basic and general information about our faith. There are many other sites. Unfortunately, you, sometimes you do click to uh, Islamophobic websites. Those who have uh, pretend to give information, but actually they are promoting hatred. Um, hopefully nobody goes to them. Well, there's all sorts of information out there what, yes. and we all have different beliefs, but I believe we had a question from the audience right before we go for commercial. So, would you like to ask that question? Uh, yeah. I was going to say, do you think that the Sunni sect mainly formed because the Shiites is a lot based on tradition and when the faith started spreading to different parts of the world, they couldn't really relate to that part of the region and those traditions, but they still wanted to like accept the faith in general, but kind of form it to their um, values almost which were a little different than the traditional values well um the question is i do, i wonder if they hear the question i don't on, know if they the, can either if the, you can repeat yes it. uh she asked uh, if i get time to answer it before the I break think you i won't, will but let's repeat yes. the question um, the question is um i think she said why the sunnis are the majority and they have a bigger number and the Shias are minority. Are they because because is it because the Shia follow a, a, a very traditional concept of of the faith, and then when they go to different regions, because of this, it, yes, because of this it, tradition, they might be uh, you know uh, could not spread as. Well, I be, we will we're, talk about yeah, this Yeah, we're going to go to commercial and, and right. then we can get into answering that question All for right. our guests and and for our live studio audience. Thank you. 
I am a monster. I will never back down. I am part of a tradition. I got green in my veins! I'm ready to go! I'm a monster! This, this is our team. This is our town! This, this is our barn! This is our time. I am relentless. I will never get tired of the goal song. I'm ready to go! I will never quit. I am a monster. I am a monster! I'm a monster! Watch Tim Teeson live Wednesdays at 3 p.m. right here on CentralValleyTalk.com and on digital channel 33.2. If you missed the live broadcast, we're on every Wednesday night at 11 p.m. on Comcast channel 200 and digital channel 43.5. You don't want to miss this. You're watching CentralValleyTalk.com. CentralValleyTalk.com. Hey, Central Valley, this is Chuck Leonard. Starting in September, I'll be on KAIL, my 7.1. Let's go out in the Tower District and see what people think. Chuck Leonard, I saw that guy in the tour bus with Eddie Money. Chuck Leonard, that guy's been building himself up for years. Chuck Leonard, hey, why are you going to hassle me, man? Central Valley Buzz with Chuck Leonard, starting September 16th on KAIL, my 7.1. CentralValleyTalk.com Beanie with us here today and there was a question from the live audience right before we cut for commercial so I am going to have him repeat that question one more time in case you're just tuning in and then we will go into his explanation of that. Yes, the question was is that uh, uh, why the Shiat are the minority? Is it because uh, they are a traditional um, understanding of the faith and probably when they went to different regions uh, because of their traditional understanding, um, maybe they were not a spread? Uh, uh, well, we believe that um, uh, uh, when a government or the power follows uh, a, a faith, it would be very easier for that faith when they accept accept and uh, adopt an ideology or a mm -hmm. faith or a school of thought it would be much easier for that uh, ideology or faith to be promoted and spread spread um, for the 14th centuries i would say most parts of the 14th centuries until recently the shiites were the opposition and to, to the powers who ruled over the, uh, okay. yes, many centuries. Um, many were persecuted, many were um, actually killed uh, because of their beliefs. And even today, probably you hear about a lot of sectarian war and violence, uh, uh, especially in Iraq and in, in Afghanistan and Pakistan, uh, and especially the violence is targeted against Shia minorities and in many and this is the reason you know because they were in opposition and persecuted so uh but we believe that um we share the the basically the same faith the principles of of the faith uh the the differences are very minor however she has always stood um against corruption if there is corruption in any government or any form of power uh, throughout history they do they did it uh, and they followed the the family of the prophet and especially as a grandson uh, who stood for justice against injustice and corruption and he, he was killed 50 years up after the, the the departure of the prophet himself because his is uh, is a standing for in, uh, for justice, fighting injustice. Oh, and you, when you have corruption, people don't want you to fight them. <laughs> yes, for unfortunately, some powers, and we don't believe this is because of religion, but this is because of politics, politics. and and, po and power. And power mm -hmm. does corrupt. It doesn't matter whether you are Sunni or Shia or Christian or or Jew. Sometimes people, when they are in power, they just yeah. don't care about justice. Well, the, the more that they have, you know, unfortunately, yes, it, it does it does definitely do that. Uh, I believe there was another question from the audience. Did you want to address 
Where the center yes. is. Thank you. Thank you for asking uh, where we are located and uh, are our programs open for everyone. Yes, thank you for asking this question. We are located on Maple and Nice. This is toward, I would say, north east of Fresno. Uh, and all our programs are open for everyone. Everyone. We have weekly service on Friday, our weekly service Friday, 1 p.m. every week. Okay, that's yes. why a couple of friends and I were mentioning we never see anybody in the parking lot. So that would make sense because I thought it would be evening. So 1 p.m. is the main service. Main service every week. But However, during Ramadan, because we get together around breaking the fast at sunset, so our, our uh, center is busy during the evenings. Okay. Yes, and especially, you know, during the day people are working, so they, they visit the center, their community after, uh, after work. And are you, are you breaking the fast as a community? Do you have like a potluck? Or? We, yes, we, oh. uh, I would say half of the months we, uh, we broke the fast at the center as a community. The other half is at different homes. You know, during Ramadan, you are, you are either a host or a guest. We do um, uh, join together, break the fast together, either at homes or at a at friend's home, yes. So um, I would say no family eats alone during Ramadan. They usually eat together. That's yes. very nice. That's very nice. It's it's hard enough these days um, as a family to get all your family members around the table, which is really important, let alone yes. with your friends or yes. your um, fellow believers. During Ramadan, it's really a very social time. Um, I myself, since the beginning of, the, of Ramadan, uh, 28 days ago until today, you know, uh, I always either was invited or a host. Well, you're popular, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> so. uh, well, uh, it's the generosity of, of the month, we, right. we believe. And it's two more days, um, today and tomorrow for sure. Thursday, we're not sure. It depends if we see the moon, the new moon, on Wednesday night, then the next day is the big celebration. If, if not, we'll continue for sure. Friday would be the last day. And then also while we were at break, um, Imam Ghazbini mentioned that there are some other celebrations that they hold at the Islamic Community Center um, for everybody to come and enjoy the cultural foods. And do they have dance as well? Or no, 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 no dance, dance, but there are a lot of traditional um, and culture things to offer. Uh, uh, food, as you mentioned, uh, traditional clothing, bazaars, um, uh, custom jewelry uh, and last year we had a camel ride so possibly this is a, a nice opportunity for the kids to come in and, and enjoy the ride. Did the camel spit at anyone? <laughs> I don't think so they are w very well behaved. Are they? Yeah <laughs> we <laughs> are they some is it someone's pet or you bring it in from the uh, zoo? We, actually we brought them from Los Angeles, I think from a company that caters to Hollywood and to the oh. movie industry, I, I think so. And they were very nice, very nice. Um, actually a family, a dad and a mom, uh, yes, and mom and their kids. Oh, that's so nice. So they were very, very nice to watch. I, um, in old photographs of one of the family members that she had gone to um, Egypt, Egypt in the yes. 50s, and there was a beautiful black and white photograph of her on a camel. Yes. And in that photograph, the saddle was very um, uh, ornate. I see. Did they, do, is there any, I mean, are they putting any traditional saddles on the camel? The or saddle they, just... they use here is very comfortable uh, for for kids and adults to oh. ride. So yes. it's been... Yes, the, I guess in, in the Middle East, if you ride, now I think it's, it's becoming very comfortable, but the ride of the camel is a little bit awkward, okay. the way they, they stand and the, the way they walk. And this... Uh, event is coming on October 19th and I would like to invite all your audience to come and join us October Saturday October 19th for the huge bazaar and traditional market and 
an opportunity to see a lot of Middle Eastern um, culture things. Uh, Do you know yes. what the times of day are on the 19th? Uh, last year it was toward the evenings, afternoon and evening. Okay, yeah. Yes, I would say 4 p.m. toward uh, 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the same would be uh, this year, but it's the best to um, visit our website, icfresno.org, and, and you are welcome to join us in any program, especially on October 19th. Wonderful. Well, I thank you again for coming in today, and I just wanted to mention, if you're new to the program, tuning in, that our show is going to be held Wednesdays at 3 to 4, and uh, I'm sorry, eh, Tuesdays 3 to 4, and on Wednesday mornings 9 to 10. And we look forward to you joining us. Thank you so much. Thanks again for Thank having you. me. Thank you. Thank you. It was wonderful.